band the Vortex. For what I've seen, you know, five members in the band. Six. Six. There's one that is, we've got uh, Jackie on back and vocals. Got a female uh, back and vocals. It's pretty cool on back. Excellent, Jackie. She's she's top. Adds another level to the. Yeah, she's just a bit of a. Uh, to me, she's just a bit of a. Uh, imagine a uh, Pam Scream, Scream the Delica, which the band reminds me anyway. That's right. not bad, but. She does a bit of a Denise Johnson, if you know what I mean. Excellent. She, she lends that bit to it. Sometimes when I'm reading about bands, I, I find that it'll be a bit lazy for people to say that, you know, they just name nah. drop, etc. Yeah. Um, however, when I was listening, I did feel uh, there was a wee bit no, of scheme see, in there, you know. There is a lot of that. Band, there is a lot of that. It's not a name drop. It's like people say to me, it's like, how would you describe the Vortex? And people say, oh, Manchester Swagger. I'm like, what's a fucking Manchester Swagger? Aye. 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 Is it one of them or is it one of them? It doesn't sound like anything, but it is a fucking nice swag. Uh, to me, I get a real proud of screen, screen, the bell can know that song, and, you know, that era, and, and with Jackie singing, the beats, yeah, you know, and the beats and samples and the sort of dancey guitar. You know the, the music, remember the music? Leeds band, is that right? Yeah, yeah, they're still going. Aye. Sean's a fan of the music. I thought yeah. they were, they had the kind of guitars, but they had a nice dance groove as well. Yeah. You know, like the final speed. I'm not a massive music fan, I think we had a couple of songs. Sean's a big fan of the music, aren't you, Sean? The music. The music. And you're the drummer, Sean? You know. Yeah. And you are the bass player. But I can, hear, I can hear that, I can hear that. It's a vibe more than, than yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than this. Well, like, again, it's that dancey, guitar grind. So, you know, it's a compliment. Aye, one of my favourite bands as well, eh? And yet, you know, even the most recent records. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a massive fan of it. Oh, oh, phenomenal. Oh, phenomenal. Oh, right. And that's a little bit sort of what I like the um, vanishing point as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was yeah, tremendous after a, a bit of a, you know, two or three years without bringing anything out, and then it came out with a big sound. Eh? I, I, I love more, I love the way it didn't come out. They can come out with ballads, they can come out with country girl, you know, it's just like ah, country yeah. girl, and then they can come out with that stuff from Vanishing Point, you know, kill all it, you know, it's like, you know, the it's like you know. they go from there to there, you don't know what they can come out with, and I think this band could go in that direction, where it's alright, we've got this, we've got, you know, Dirty Soul, we've got Revolution, something. And we've got that, we're always going to have that dancing, guitar whatever. I think oh, there's something about, something about yeah. Alan McGee, he's a judge, he's a good judge of bands. Aye. If you look at his past, past record, and, uh, maybe he's not doing much oh, yeah. now, but if he says that band will watch him, generally that band does it. Aye. Aye. Right, and, if, and you've only got people say, oh, there's something about Alan McGee, but if you look at his past history, his past judgments, he's, not far, he's never far wrong. His record, yeah. He's always right. Aye. And the band that he says, watch him, that band goes, pfft. Uh -huh. Especially with Fox, you can see it's Yeah, he was exactly. right, you know, so... Yeah. But he was involved with the Mary Chain as well in the early days. Yeah, well, he managed him when he signed him, uh, then he managed him. Uh, you know, I, I, I was a big fan, I was up in... You was playing in Bathgate last night, is that right? Yeah. What was that like, alright? It was alright. Good, eh? Yeah. You got a good reaction for the, yeah, the jocks? Yeah, it was really good. It was cool, man. Eh? Because uh, I was, I was kind of just looking through uh, mainly your, your own kind of past record playing live and coming up to Scotland and you've got your King Tuts and things like that and the way you've been well received. There's a bit of bond between well, good live music and, you know, the Scots audience. I've, I've always said, people say to me, it's like, you know, I have travelled the world and again and again. And again right? Right. I've done places like Rio, I've done Sydney, I've done this, I've done that. And people say, what's your favourite city in New York? What's your favourite city in the world to play? Pfft, Glasgow, mate. Okay. Why? The people, the reaction. The passion, mm -hmm. they do it, and, and, like, like and it doesn't matter if you're playing in Barrowlands or you're playing yeah. arena. We played in Harley's or some weather it's called in Bathgate last night. Mm -hmm. They were dancing, they were having it, yeah. they were loving it, and it, you get that from the small venue in, in Scotland to the big arenas. Mm -hmm. the, the passion's there. So when, when you've done the kind of big arena, you've, you've hit that kind of that peak. And you, and you come back and you can see the whites of their eyes in a wee venue like this. Is that fresh and is it kind of like going back to... It's, yeah, it's, it, it is going back and it's why you do it, isn't it? And it's, it, it's not just doing it, it's not just the venues and it's not just the, the sort of the size and the, the small scale. And like, 
<laughs> the intimacy. It's the people who do it. Yeah, I'm a And it's a passion of the oh, band. And I'm getting that within the band. I mean, forget the venues and the size and the scale of it. The main thing for me is the, the passion and the determination that we've got here within the band mm -hmm. and people, you know, it's yeah. like, that's great and that'll fit anywhere. Right. So for now, for me, it's like that and we're playing small places and then it goes on to that. And it's like, oh, yeah. So you were in Barnet last night and we're in Barnet one tonight. Yeah. So where, where's the next stop? Taunton. Where's that? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I was Somerset. stuck in it geography. I thought it was in Switzerland. Yeah. I had my suitcase. Yeah. Passport. Yeah, passport. Yeah. Yeah. passport. Yeah. passport. Yeah. passport. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. But I think we'll come back. Yeah. The plans are we, we, we just come back from a two week European tour, which was brilliant. You know, we did it with no press, no promotion. Uh, very little promotion. And uh, we went out and we, we packed it out. We did gig after gig after gig. We had one day off and uh, back to back gigs. And it was brilliant with very little promotion, no press. Mm -hmm. And we went and packed out and we got a great reaction. And, you know, drove a bus and the way we went and we did it. So we're going to do that next year. We've got Scandinavia, we've got Europe. But in between, I think we've got a little bit of time that we can fill in. And rather than do London, rather than do Manchester, rather than do Birmingham, I think we should concentrate on sort of Glasgow, Edinburgh, Dundee, and do Scotland, and maybe Belfast, down to Dublin and come back and then go off to Europe. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's really important and I think people gain in Scotland. Oh, For some reason they always have and they always will. Deja drop one, deja drop one. Snake bite. It's all right. Yeah. I'll eat you while we talk. <laughs> you're uh, recording, you're an album, you're recording one. <laughs> you're putting an EP together or... No, it's an album, we're doing an album. Um, we're sort of doing it all... At the moment, it's all very much in-house. We haven't got a manager, we haven't got a record label. We're just an unsigned band from Manchester. Yeah. Forget me, forget what I did in the past. We're an unsigned band from Manchester. And what we're doing is... We've done a tour of Europe, we're doing a tour of UK. But we're making money, and the money we get, we're ploughing it in. We're recording it ourselves. We're doing it all in-house at the moment. So, by Christmas, we're going to year, we'll have an album ready, mixed, done. And do you lose that yourself or do you go to uh, well, we don't know. present it to We don't know. We, no. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Alan McGee's going to take some copies. Aye. He might bring it there, he might bring it there, but who knows? We might end up putting it ourselves. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Or. Like 15 years ago when, when you were maybe doing this before, I'm going ahead, with regards to cutting a demo, sending it to various different people, how's it changed with regards to the, the digital kind of. You know that we're in now. You can you can well, stick it on a MySpace page or put. It yeah, well, we didn't we didn't do it that way. I mean, we were really really fortunate in the fact that we turned up at King Touch. Alan McGee happened to be there. We're an analog band living in a digital. He liked what he saw and heard. I like that analog band living in a digital yeah. age. Yeah. Mm. Exactly, but we were just in the right place at the right time. Um, we didn't have a demo, well, we did have a demo as such, but we didn't hand it out to people. But we just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Alan McGee was there and he just went, I like it, I love it, do you want a record deal? Yeah, simple as that. Mm -hmm. We were just lucky in that sense. But who knows what would have done, would we have touted it around record companies, would we have got bored of that, would we have got pissed off with it, I don't know. But these days it's a lot different, like you're saying. It's like Aye. you've got MySpace, you've got Facebook, you've, you, you've got the internet, you've got a massive tool there. Record companies aren't what they were, you know. So <laughs> we were selling millions. I mean, bands don't sell millions no. of records anymore. Record companies haven't got fucking money anymore. So it's like, who knows? So it's a day of time for us. It's like, yeah, we're going to make the album, we're going to finish it by the new year, then we'll see what we do with it. We might end up with it ourselves, I don't know. So who, who's doing the, who's on the kind of production duties with the album? You're just doing it all together? Badger. Just working it out? When we can fit them in, I mean, you know, people within the band work, they've got nine to five jobs. So when you can get in and do drums, mm -hmm. when you get in and do guitar, you do it. <laughs> when you've got a bit of time, you get in and we're sort of just plugging away and making a record. There will come a moment in the next couple of weeks where we all have to sit in as a unit and go, right, okay, this is it, turn up, do that, and, and start mixing. Aye, aye. But as far as production, production duties, we haven't got a producer, and I can't speak. <laughs> you're doing me, with that. I would have expected to have a few, you know, I know it's early days, but you would expect to have a few people in the end, having a really seeing see what kind of sound you've got, what you're all about, yeah, you know? maybe, but you know what, I joined a band in January, Mm -hmm. and we concentrated on London and that wasn't a 
conscious thing like we've got to concentrate on London because we want to crack London. Uh, it was more, for me personally, it was like more gar Manchester. And it was more about me working out how I'm going to work with Maz, who's a guitarist, the songwriter, mm -hmm. how my guitar's going to fit with his. Hang about. You know, shut up, I'm not talking. Really the you know, so that, yeah. well, that was Get you. Right. <laughs> how, how is the songwriting duty going to spread it? Is it? I write them all, but they take credit. <laughs> no, Sean, Sean the drummer, and uh, mm. Maz, the boy, that's it. They come right. along with no, that, they write the songs. Right. I come in and fucking make them sound massive. Right? On the top of the plate. End of the day. <laughs> the reason I'm in this band is because they write the songs and the songs sound fucking mint, mate. Right. I'll tell you one thing and I'm not going to get my fucking high horse out. I'll do it once and I'll do it and I'll get on it and I'll get right. down. Mm -hmm. And say it a million times, I did fucking never with mate with Oasis. Right. And I went from the bottom to the top with them boys and I went up the ladder. I don't need to join a fucking band. No been there, mm -hmm. done it. For the band to make me go my fucking ass, go my fucking chair and pick my fucking same guitar that I did all them records to, mm -hmm. to turn me on to do that, you better be fucking good. Mm -hmm. There's the band. That's why I made it. Speaks for it's the simple yep. as that. So where, I mean, was it 19, what was it, 99 when you left out your last band? Yeah. So it had been 10 years before you found, because it was January 2009. That I didn't want to find a band. No, I was mate. Hear about these guys? no, I did a few things in between. Was it the and it was dog one? Was it? Was that yeah, one? Yeah, I did that, band? and I did the series, and I did Vinnie Picuda. I, I, I went over to Thailand and did a bit of stuff, and it was fun, and I enjoyed it. But it didn't turn me on. But it was good. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, it's like fucking yeah, it got me out of the house. It got me playing my guitar. It's like yeah, I enjoyed that. And it got me doing what I like doing. But it didn't turn me on. Right. Them boys turned me on. Did you just see them by chance? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I was, I was doing a show with uh, Terry. I ended up, Terry left and I ended up doing it with two girls called Natalie Michelle, the Manchester Music Show, BC. Uh, Natalie Michelle, co presenter, and big friends of Nick. Thanks for playing all text. And I got to know Nick through that. Blah, blah, blah. And they just turned out and said, you know, we're doing a gig in Manchester. Do you want a DJ before we come out? I'll tell you what. Man, come on, fucking do two songs. Aye, aye. It's a real life stuff. So you, it, it sort of turned into a regular thing where the Vortex were playing, and I'd, I'd jump on and do two songs and, you know, enjoy doing that. And I really wanted to join them, but I didn't dare ask him, they didn't fucking ask me. <laughs> <laughs> right, I mean, so did you have to invite I just yourself it in. in? I just bought it in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not actually part of the band, he's just kind of no, come along. Is, no, that, is that what's happening? No. I reckon they're going to suck. You can drive off. I drive the bus and all that. Well, it's Lucy, he's leaving tonight. I, I heard him saying that. Yeah, I'm leaving he's tonight. Sorry, he's going to have our own stage rock. But you might as well go in with a fucking crash and go out with a bang, you know what I mean? And yeah, I'm going to do it tonight. I'm going to fucking... I'm a bright fucking fat with a guitarist. I just don't like him. Why is he the subject of your No, I fucking hate him. <laughs> Why do you think... Why do you think Manchester compared to, sort of, say, London? Let's go this massive... History of like the not music. only great bands one head are credible. Oh, well, I'll tell you what it comes down to. I think it's a working class city, right? You've got you've got Liverpool, you've got Manchester, but 30 miles over the water you've got Dublin. So you've got Irish roots, you've got Celtic roots, and already you've got a passion, you've got a hunger, you've got a work ethic. But you've got people who fucking slave and fucking do that and fucking dig and fucking do what they do, nine to five, Monday to Friday. And on a Friday, I'm talking about Ireland now, yep. I'm talking Celtic, mm -hmm. and this is a play at Scotland. Mm -hmm. That's my attitude. Mm -hmm. And come Friday, you got Friday, you got Saturday, you got Sunday. Come hell or fucking high water, they're gonna party, man. He does it. Where is that drummer? He'll work fucking Monday to Friday, but come try and stop him on Saturday night, he won't do it because he's got that. Irish blood inside him. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that way, that's where it comes from, but my roots are in Ireland. I'm going to go to Ireland. People work Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, Friday. Friday night, if they haven't got enough money to fucking go out and piss it up and fucking load it up by load of manor, they'll pick up a guitar. They, got, they can all play a guitar or a banjo or a piano or something. They'll sit around the fucking fire and just go like that and make music. And they'll brew their own fucking beer. And it won't cost them fuck all. Music costs you nothing. And that's the roots, Celtic roots. 
And I think that's why Manchester and Liverpool produce brilliant bands. There's that why the jokes are appreciated bands as well. Irish fans, right? Johnny Marr, Liam Gallagher, and all of them. Just don't bands, they've all got Irish roots. And that's why it's that working class fucking slaved it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Fucking, I deserve to do what I fucking want. If it's play guitar, drink beer, and it's music. So I might be wrong. That's my deal. I think you know. If I'm a fucking truth. Well, You're either a footballer or a fucking punk star, right? right? Or you're digging fucking roads, end of, and you're gonna break your fucking back. Your way out is pick up a guitar or pick up a pick fucking up football, man. You, you're not your friend, right? Right? Is that you're not the club, right? To a sense, yeah, I don't yeah. want a game, so I'm not that. But that is the passion, and that's it's a working a class. It's a weird it game. is a get out. A bit of hunger. It, it is a right, hunger, right, yeah. Right. I think so, and I believe it, man. So do you think I would have That was my hunger. No, I think I think I think that's the ball, so I'm waiting to lose it. Or play guitar. So I'm waiting to lose it as well, but once they get to the Well, it's music or football, and I was never going to the ball, but I was going to all right with the guitar. So I thought, that's my way. I'm going to be in the middle. Two minutes for a minute in football. Quiz was a great thing, so I'm going to be in the middle. Yeah, we know it was. We didn't have Charles Reddle, but he's going to keep it easy. He's going to be in the middle. So next week, I'm going to be in the middle. I'm going to be in the middle. I'm going to be in the middle. Sit in the office all my life. That's a working class Irish mentality. I'm not going to be fucking big and fucking passionate. I'm not going to be fucking big and fucking passionate. I'm not going to be fucking big and fucking passionate. I'm not going to be fucking big and fucking passionate. Yeah, done that. I don't blah it. Keep my way to fucking Prada. I'm not going to wear Gucci. Very nice. Very nice. I spot that. Oh my god, it's lovely. You want to borrow it? Yeah. Really nice. It's never changed me, mate. It's still me, mate. No, it's still me. Something that binds me, mate. A lot of people do, but we're not fucking Coldplay, mate, and I'm not Chris Martin, and I'm not going to get in a run. Chris Martin's going to make a fucking Millie Queen go, eh, I'm going to marry a pop star. I didn't. I married the bird that I fucking grew up with. End of. And I might wear that, and then it's going to be next. End of. It's going to be next. Not next to the dressing room. Next to No. I'm very, very it's fucking me in that way. You know what? Fucking, I was jacking on the fucking driveway to a man. I'm bouncing around like a con. Come on. Then I had to go and pick the band up. Load the car. Gig. No. Don't get me on my back, fucking mum. But is that no part of the beauty? You've been in that band. Yeah. You're on. You know. You know. Being in the band is being in the band making great fucking music with great fucking people. Aye, aye. It's not like going, oh god, I'm not going to be this fucking millionaire, like pretending I'm back to me, dude. I'm only fucking me, mate. Mm. And I've never fucking changed. End of. Wipe the gravy off the for the camera. Bit of a diva in that sense. Fuck off. Bollocks. Let me have my fucking broccoli and dine for that. Yeah. Let's put it on the fucking record now. I'll eat the shark and all. Shark. Nick's going to make it. Nick and Steve Ed. Now you're talking. Nick and Steve Ed. Now you're talking. Nick and Steve Ed. Now you're talking. Nick and Steve Ed. I'll tell you one thing. Alan McGee. The Grants. My ass. Bollocks. Bollocks. No, it's an influence in my wear is. Don't you think I've got to look at the bone at the bottom? Oh, well, it looks like it's not even him, it's his brother. Double fist.
at you. Coldplay boy. Yeah, I like him. I like the first album. It's genius. I thought it is. I like it. I think we'll be even up. That's it. Coldplay's first album.